industry has been raking in profits and putting safety on the sidelines. Mr. Whitaker, do you agree that the East Palestine derailment would have been far worse if there hadn't been multiple crew members on board? I do, sir. Uh, thank you for the question. I think if the railroads had it their way down to one person crew and they reduced the conductor position to a ground based, uh, meaning a person at a pickup truck driving to the site, that puts the engineer in danger. It also puts the response time and the assessment of the issue in danger. So if there was only one, one crew member on that train, do you think it could have been far worse? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's why my Safe Freight Act would require trains to have at least two crew members, and I'm proud that my legislation has been included in the Bipartisan Rail Safety Act. Mr. Shaw, will you commit to supporting legislation requiring at least two-person crews on all freight trains? Senator, we'll, we'll commit to using research and technology to ensure the railroad operates safely. Will you commit to a, a two-person crew on all trains? Senator, we're a data-driven organization, and I'm not aware of any data that links crew size with safety. Do, do, you, uh, do you disagree with Mr. Whitaker when he says that it would have been far worse? Um, his testimony is loud and clear. It would have been worse if there's only one person uh, as a crew on that train. Do you, do you disagree with him? Senator, I believe that we have operations infrastructure on the ground to, to respond to derailments. Uh, I, I, think, uh, I, I think you're not answering the question, okay? It's, it's almost like the last hearing all over again uh, because I think the evidence is, is very clear that, uh, that uh, we, these trains can be absolutely safer, uh, but that technology is no replacement for human beings. Uh, for example, it can't perform the cognitive functions of a conductor and can't collect visual cues during an emergency. Two-person crews make our trains safer, and I wish that you would commit to that today because I think it's pretty obvious that that is the correct answer, and I just get sick of industry executives talking about supporting the principles of regulation while they lobby against common sense uh, regulations like this one behind the scenes. Uh, Again, let me move back over to you, Mr. Whitaker. The safety issues that plague our nation's rail system are not a mysterious, inex inexplicable phenomenon. They are a direct result of business decisions. So, Mr. Whitaker, do you agree that the rail industry, including Norfolk Southern, has a business model that prioritizes profit over safety? Thank you for the question. Yes, that business model is precision scheduled railroading. So those safety issues are not just a threat to the communities where rail companies operate. They are a threat to rail workers. In the wake of the East Palestine disaster, Norfolk Southern failed to provide proper protective equipment to the workers who cleaned up the derailment site. That is appalling. Mr. Whitaker, do you agree that rail workers should have the ability to collectively stop work when conditions threaten their health and safety consistent with the federal Railroad Safety Act. Thank you for the question. Yes, I do believe workers should be able to stop any and all work whenever their safety is in danger, except as it stands right now, we would be retaliated against. And why would you be retaliated against? Because we don't have protections on that level. So, Mr. Shaw, do you agree that rail workers should be able to collectively stop work in unsafe and unhealthy conditions consistent with the federal Railroad Safety Act. Senator, I, I absolutely would expect our employees to operate in a safe manner. And if they are concerned about the safety of their operations, then I, I would expect them to address that. Well, the rail workers are saying that your company has failed to ensure their health and safety, and they fear retribution. That's what Mr. Whitaker is saying for speaking up. Workers must be able to stand in solidarity in order to stay healthy and safe. So your response is just unacceptable, uh, Mr. Shaw, today. Uh, and that's why I'm working on legislation to codify this union right. And I urge my colleagues to uh, join with me. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Capito, I think. Oh, wait. Look.